The goal of this video is to show you how to connect your Tracer unit to the X-Ray Ops software, which then allows you to change and adjust voltage and current parameters that your instrument uses and which you can select in the S1 PXRF software when you're analyzing samples and objects. To begin, you will need to place your unit on a benchtop stand, remove any filters if possible, attach a small sample stand, position the small stainless steel alloy standard or another small sample over the aperture, and then cover this with the sample cap. You can remove the battery and connect the instrument to an AC power outlet using its AC power supply. This way you don't have to worry about the battery running out while you're adjusting the parameters. Make sure that your unit's uh, start button is not activated. Connect the instrument to your laptop using the appropriate cable using either the serial connector or the serial to USB adapter to make the connection to the USB port of the laptop. Turn on the power using the key. Then allow the instrument to warm up for at least 60 seconds. If you're using a serial to USB adapter, you will have to determine the COM port number using either the view COM port software or using the device manager of your laptop. The device manager works with pretty much all versions of Windows software, so I'm going to show you how to use that. To find the device manager, you can go to your computer start menu and search for it. In my case, I have to press the continues button. The device manager window will pop up and you will see a long list of things. Amongst them are ports. Press the plus button and you will see the COM port number adjacent to prolific USB to serial COM port. In my case, this is COM port number three. Make a note of this. You can close the device manager. Now open the X-Ray Op software. Enter the COM port number. If you're using the serial uh, connection, then it'll be COM port number one. In my case, I'm using the USB to serial adapter, and I just determined that the COM port is number three. Check the high speed communications box, and then initiate communication with the unit by pressing the open X-Ray, checking the open X-Ray COM port Box. Communication is successful if you see the voltage settings and current settings fields populated by numbers. You will also see the read and set filter layers window in most recent versions of X-Ray Ops. We're not going to be using this, so you can collapse it. Before making any changes to X-Ray Ops, it's a good idea to take an image or record all the settings in the window in case you need to return to the exact same ones. You can do this by uh, print screen and then pasting it into a document, or you can use the snipping tool. The snipping tool can be accessed from the start menu. If you go to the start menu and look at all programs, under Accessories, you should find the Snipping tool in Windows 7 or later versions. You're able to select the area of interest in your window to create a new snip. Then we can copy this image and paste it into Word. I'm going to press Control V to paste. Then we can save it to the desktop. X-Ray Ops 2014 testing. Once you've saved your settings, you're ready to proceed. 
There are a few other things you need to know before starting. The first through sixth lines show the tube settings currently stored on board the instrument. The seventh line shows the active tube settings only. Do not overwrite the data in this line. It will not be saved. Only change settings in lines one through six. Make sure that the auto mode box is checked. Also make sure that the pulse period is set to 254. Do not change this number. Finally, review the filament current settings column. The filament current settings should not be set to greater than 250. I'm going to show you how to begin entering preliminary settings for new set of voltage and current settings that you will then be able to use in S1PXRF. We're going to change the settings in this row that is set to 40 kV and 15 microamps. To begin, you need to click the radio buttons next to the voltage and the current settings to tell the software that that's the row that you'll be working on. I'm going to change these settings to 20 kV and I'm going to change the current setting to 8 microamps. If you're going to use microamps that are lower than 10 microamps, you need to check the anode scalar button and then enter the number, so in my case, 8 microamps. Then you're going to examine high voltage setting and filament current setting values for other lines to see if there are similar values that you can build on. So in my case, the closest value to 20 kV are 15 kV values. For 15 kV, high voltage settings are 114 and 80. So for 20 kV setting, I'm going to start out with 120. For 8 microamps, close settings are 188 for this line, which, has a 10 mic which uses 10 microamps. So I'm going to leave mine at 191. Once you're done, click the Update Settings button. We're now going to begin optimizing the settings. To begin the optimization of the settings, click the Monitor Actuals button. This will turn the red button green, but the X-ray tube will not yet become energized. In order to turn on the X-ray tube, or to activate it, you need to press the PC trigger by checking this box. Alternatively, you can use the remote switch cable or you can use the switch on the handle of the instrument to turn on the unit. You have to press down these buttons to keep activating the x-ray tube. In my case, I'm going to use the PC trigger. As soon as I check the box, the red warning light turns on on the instrument and you can see the live numbers for the voltage and the current. The value for the voltage should reach the desired setting, which in my case is 20 kV, in just one or two seconds after the PC trigger is checked. You can see that in my case it was varying quite a bit. Note the number next to actual HVG DAC. In my case, this is 88. I'm going to have to enter this on the line where I've entered my 20 kV and 8 microamp settings. Also take a look at the anode current field. It's important that this value should reach the setting, which in my case is 8 microamps, 
Also, in just one or two seconds after the PC trigger box is checked, it should stay within one microamps of the selected value and stay stable for at least two minutes. Another field that you need to look at is the pulse length and make a note of this. In my case, the value is 189. Uncheck the PC trigger button to deactivate the x-ray tube and click on monitor actuals to make the red button appear again. This means that the software is going to stop monitoring what the instrument is doing and this allows you to change values in the line that you are editing. In my case, I need to type in the actual HVG DAC value that I was reading out when I turned the tube on. It was 88. The value of the pulse length should ultimately be 200 plus or minus 2. My pulse length was 189 and you can still see this value over here. The pulse length value is adjusted or is affected by the filament current setting. If you increase the filament current setting, the pulse length value goes down and if you decrease the filament current setting, the pulse length value increases. In my case, I need to increase my pulse length from 189 to about 200. That means I need to decrease my filament current setting. I'm going to enter in a value of 185 to start. And now I'm going to update my settings. After the first round of optimizing the settings, you need to check out the instrument and see how the values have adjusted. You might need to continue with another round of optimization. To start, click the Monitor Actuals button. You should see the red button turn green. To activate the x-ray tube, I'm going to use the PC trigger and check this box. I can see that my red warning light has turned on and the tube is active. I can also see that the voltage reached 20 kV very quickly and I see that the actual HVG setting is 84. If you look on line 5, I have set mine to 88 so I know that I'm going to have to change this to the reading that I'm seeing here which is 84 or 85. I can also see that my anode current reached 8 microamps pretty quickly and it's staying within plus or minus 0.5 microamps of that value. The pulse length is around 202 or 203. This is really good because the pulse length should be 200 plus or minus 2. So I don't have a lot of work to do. I need to adjust my actual HVG value. I'm going to stop monitoring actuals. First I'm going to uncheck the PC trigger to deactivate the x-ray tube and then I'm going to click on monitoring actuals. Now I can change my values. I'm going to adjust my high voltage setting to 84 and I'm going to decrease my pulse length just a little bit by increasing the value of the filament current settings. I'm going to just change it by one. So to decrease my pulse length, I need to increase the value of the filament current setting. After you make any changes, make sure to update settings. 
click on the Monitor Actuals button and activate the X-ray tube. The actual high voltage setting reached 20 kV plus or minus 1 kV. I see that the value is changing a little bit and here's my actual HVG DAC value. It's at 84. The anode current is reading 8 microamps plus or minus 0.5 microamps and my pulse length is 200. I note that my KV values are changing a little bit and that my actual HVG DAC values are reading a little higher and they seem unstable. It looks like I need to make an adjustment. I'm going to turn off the PC trigger and stop monitoring the actuals. Let's make a small adjustment again to the high voltage settings. I'm going to increase 84 to 86. I'm also going to enter in my pulse length as 200, since that is the value that we reached when we were monitoring the real numbers. I'm going to update the settings, click on Monitor Actuals, and activate the X-ray tube. I'm taking a look at the actual high voltage and the anode current values. I'm also going to take a look at the pulse length, which is reading 200. The values appear to be stable and within the limits that I need. The only thing I might need to adjust is the actual HVG settings. I'm going to deactivate the x-ray tube and stop monitoring actuals. I'm going to change the high voltage setting to 84 again and update my settings. Click on monitor actuals, activate the x-ray tube, and watch what the high voltage and the current settings do. They reach their set values quickly and they appear to remain quite stable. Uncheck the PC trigger and turn off monitoring actuals. If you are satisfied with your new settings in X-ray Ops, then you can go ahead and disconnect the instrument and the software. To do this, uncheck the box next to Open X-ray COM port, and then my suggestion is to minimize X-ray Ops. Your next step is to launch S1PXRF and to check out the instrument settings in that software. Make sure that your new settings are present and that you can use them.